order to write this out, I'm going to create a new geometry node, which I'm going to call point cloud. And I'm going to use an object merge node to bring in uh, information from the box object. Before we do that, let's delete the group that we have in this box object and add a null. And let's call this point cloud out. And let's put the render and display flags back on the top import. So in the point cloud node, we're going to object merge the from the box object, the point cloud out node. And we're then uh, going to use an attribute SOP to delete the attributes we don't need just to save disk space. And in fact it looks like the only attribute we've got there is pops wet, which is the one that we want. So I don't in fact need that. Now I don't want this to render, so I'm going to take its display flag off. But I am going to create a geometry ROP. What this does is output a sequence of frames and store them as geometry. I'm going to store it in this cache directory. I'm going to call it point dot dollar f three dot pc. PC is the extension for a point cloud. And we're going to render a frame range, 1 to 100. And we need to pick the SOP that we're going to render. And that is our point cloud object. And I want to initialize, initialize simulations when I render this. And all the other settings can stay at their default. So Let's render this out. I'm going to pause the video while this renders. So that's now rendered. And the next thing we need to do is write a bespoke shader to shade uh, the surface here so that it takes account of that point information that we've just stored. So I go into a shop network. I'm going to drag a basic material on here. So that's a basic displacement. What I want is a basic surface. I'm going to rename it wet map surface. It's often easier to create new materials by editing the ones that are available here in the gallery, and that's what we're going to do in this case. Let's go into the shop network, let's open this up, go inside, and again, we get this enormous network here, which looks extremely complicated. But in fact, uh, all that we need to do is alter the base color so that it's different in areas that are wet and possibly KS which is the specularity of the surface so that it is different in areas which are wet. So in both these cases I'm going to select the node and create a copy which I'm then going to edit. Press P to bring up a parameter editor. And I'm going to call it base color wet. Base color wet. Base color wet. And let's 
give it a default of some middling grey. And similarly with the specularity. Like so. And that's going to stay at a default of 1. Now we need to uh, bring in our point cloud. The point cloud open node is what does this. Zoom in so that we can see it. We're going to create a parameter for the file for the radius and for the max points. The point cloud is just a store of points. The file is the name of, of the store, the name of the file in which you've stored the point. The radius tells uh, the shader how wide a circle to look in for points and max points tells it the number of the maximum number of points to sample. Let's select all of these, press C to get a color box and color them light yellow so that we know that they're parameters. What the PC open node gives you is a handle and you can use this to take a point cloud filter. Now a point cloud filter simply does this calculation, looks at the nearest points to the points you're interested in, and then calculates a value based on those points. And the value we want is going to be pops wet. Let's just double check that that is indeed what we called our data, and we can do that using the details view, pops wet. And you can see some of those have a value of 1 and some a value of 0. So going back to our shader, We are taking the point cloud, we are using the handle produced by this node to do a search within the radius specified here for the maximum number of points specified here, and we're deducing a value here which is our pops wet value, and that's going to be between 0 and 1. We then want to use a mix node to mix the wet colour and the non-wet colour. The bias here is where this value fits in, and that's going to mix between the two colours that go in here, depending on what this value is. So let's attach the base colour and the wet colour. And then this needs to replace base colour in the shader itself. So we connect it there. And we need another mix node. This time we're going to connect the two specularity factors. And We're going to attach that to where the specularity goes into the subnetwork.